we were talking earlier on, mm -hmm. um, we both recalled this terrible event that happened in India in December mm -hmm. in Delhi, mm -hmm. this terrible rape and that wave of, it wasn't so much riots, but action and people coming out in the streets, men and women, because um, it was just so, it was just so terrible. Now that, that affected you as well. So can you tell me what's now happening in India as a result of that, that, in, that one incident there? Because I, I know from my travels to India, the challenge that women have, I've been to many empowerment projects there where the stories I've heard the women tell me directly through translators, you know, they suffer rape and they go to the police station, they get raped by the policeman or they're encouraged to not report it's it right. and it's suppressed, it's suppressed at all levels and this mm -hmm. was a huge explosion, wasn't mm -hmm. it, in December. Mm -hmm. So what's been happening in, in the cultures in, in India think, since then? Yeah, I think that at three levels it's important. I think that rape was a wake-up call mm -hmm. because we could no longer be in denial of how women are being treated. It wasn't, it, it isn't that there wasn't rape before, mm. and it isn't uh, the case that that led to rape stopping. No. In fact, after that, there have been some horrendous cases of uh, young girls, as young as two and five years old, being raped, and seven-year-olds in schools, in school toilets. So what's happened is that the silence has broken around right. rape, and mm -hmm. pretense has gone that all is well with... Uh, women in India and mm. I think that's a very important opening and the media has played a huge role in this mm. because they didn't let the case go away. I think the second thing has hap that has happened is that it woke the government up because of the people taking to the streets. Otherwise it would have just it was just been dismissed as one more case where you express sympathy and go on. It would have been day. news headlines for a, a week. But or it may not or even be a week. Yeah, it a few was, days. Yeah. yeah. Or a day. Mm. And so the rape laws have changed, which is a very important start. But uh, I feel that the main change that has to be happened on the one ha on the one hand the uh, not just rape laws but the whole judicial system and the police system has to wake up to the huge gender bias within mm -hmm. and uh, and that's not enough because at all age levels in India there are fewer mm -hmm. girls and women surviving than that there are men so the inequality is showing up in the demographics it's literally a matter of life and death and that's not going to change till we really address the cultural issues and the deep cultural issues in the way women are raised, girls are raised mm -hmm. and made to believe and we don't question it because it's part of the culture and we need to start questioning just about everything of that girls are of less value than boys and that women are of less value than, than men. And it's true that in India a lot mo a lot of women are in now uh, CEOs of large companies, mm -hmm, particularly mm -hmm. in banks. They are working in large numbers, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their own sense of uh, well-being mm. below the surface yes. has shifted. Mm -hmm. They certainly have economic independence, but it doesn't mean that they freed up from the traditions, the traditional hold of the culture, which keeps women. Uh, l gives women less status. So, for example, one of the reasons for the strong uh, gender preference or preference for boys mm. is that when a Hindu man dies, the father dies, the boy is the uh, has only the boy, not the girl, have the right to light the funeral pyre mm -hmm. to release his soul. Mm -hmm. And so there was a recent Supreme Court decision, a mm -hmm. Supreme Court decision, mm -hmm. in which a boy was kidnapped from a family, a four year, uh, seven year old, and was killed. And the Supreme Justice uh, Court ruled that the uh, person who was accused would be given a death penalty mm -hmm. because it was a boy that was killed and not a girl. Okay. And that the family still had three children, three girls, but because it was the boy who was killed, that it meant that the parents were deprived of a primary income earner, and that there would be nobody to take care of him them in the old age. Right. So these cultural yes. um, constraints need to be addressed if we're going to make six hundred million women and girls safe. Wow, there's a lot of there's a lot of 
people in, in, in India in, in geographically, regionally spread out and at different levels of society yeah. around there. So there's, there's uh, it's quite a task in getting that yeah. cultural shift, but once identified, that's the trajectory. Exactly. It? That's the deep, rather than just changing the odd law, right. looking at the culture underneath. Right. I think the other myth that's important to address is that this uh, uh, gender inequality is not an issue of poverty. In fact, poor women are freer than men in the middle classes and in the rich. If you look at the demographic statistics, um, feticide, female feticide is higher in the richest neighborhoods in the cities than in the poor areas. I heard that when I was in Delhi. I couldn't believe so it. So it isn't, you would it think isn't that the with, case. With education. Right. So it's not just education. No. It's not just income. It's not just employment. It is uh, basically addressing the underlying issues of culture. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge issue of joblessness amongst uh, young men. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue that needs to be addressed because the cities are swarming with young men uh, between the ages of 17 and 25 who have nothing to do mm -hmm. or Thank get you. very mm -hmm. little, mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, little mm -hmm. income. And the research shows very clearly that uh, when there are large numbers of unemployed young men, there's a lot more conflict, yeah. including civil war. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. What are you doing at the moment? I'm doing two things. One is I'm uh, writing a book that was uh, emerged out of my own personal agony about uh, Nirbhaya or Jyoti Pandey, as her name is, um, murder and rape and then murder because she did die because of the extreme torture that she was uh, subject to. And I'm writing a book that I'm hoping will change the conversation between men and women in India by addressing some of these cultural issues, coming from a source of compassion and telling my own story and linking it to the demographics as well as the, some, of the fem some of the theories in social change. Beautiful. Um, and then the other part, of course, after that is to address the helping people once they become aware, how do you change behavior, how do you change your mm. habit. Mm. It's a habit. Changing habits, that's the thing, isn't it? And getting into a new habit once you yeah. have that awareness. Fantastic. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. And um, thank you for spending time today. Good luck with the rest of your retreat. And you. if I don't see you before, which I hope I will, hopefully I'll see you at the next summer gathering. Yes. <laughs> We've got Thank you so much. <laughs> thank Lovely. You. Thank you, Deepa. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today.